So today we're going to talk about uh, populations, and this is IIB section 5.3, um, really looking at what causes populations to change and, and how we can track that uh, over generations and, and some of the things that we see happen with populations. And so the first question is, why do populations fluctuate or change? This is happening all the time, uh, and we see populations changing and fluctuating. And generally, most populations are already pretty well established, but we can sometimes see populations go up or go down, depending on a number of different factors, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. But first, I'd like you to imagine a situation where we've got, um, we've got a well-stocked meadow, and there isn't really anything living there. Um, and then along come a population of young rabbits, and they enter this well-stocked meadow. And after kind of familiarizing themselves and getting used to the area, and uh, the new territory, they start to establish burrows, and they start to do what rabbits do, and that is reproduce, and they reproduce lots. Um, and, and this is possible because they have unrestricted access to resources. There's plenty of food, there's plenty of space, there's plenty of water, um, they have mates, they have burrows, and so they have all the things that they need in order to survive. And because of that, they continue and continue to reproduce. And so then all of a sudden we get this huge big population of rabbits. Um, and because they, because the species, uh, rabbits reproduce so quickly, uh, very quickly we have a large population. And so uh, this population continues to grow and get bigger, uh, but eventually it's going to get to a point where the amount of resources that are available are not enough to sustain the whole population. Um, and and the, the population is going to outnumber the amount of vegetation probably most likely, or maybe the amount of burrows, the, the space that they need in order to make their burrows. Um, and they're going to be using up all of these resources faster um, than they become available. So uh, let's use food, for example. That rabbit, po rabbit population gets so big, uh, it consumes up the grass and, and it's in a food source faster than it's able to grow. And so because of this, the population is not going to continue to grow. Uh, the, plat the population is going to enter this plateau or kind of a stationary phase. And this is simply because there's just not enough resources to support any more growth in the population size. We actually might see a little bit of growth above this stationary phase or this plateau phase. We call it the carrying capacity. But at this point, um, because there's limited resources, any, any growth above that, that stationary phase or that carrying capacity uh, is going to result in, in some organisms dying because there's just simply not enough food, for example, in order to sustain that population size. And so in this example, we would say that food has become a limiting factor because it's limiting the ability of that population to grow anymore. Uh, th this is not necessarily a new idea. Um, Robert Malthus, uh, many, many years ago, suggested this idea with humans. And he thought that the human population was growing so fast and so big that there was going to be a point or the population would get so big that there wouldn't be enough food to feed everybody. Well, that was a good idea and, and, and probably would have happened, but along came the Industrial Revolution and um, the production of factories and really the increase in efficiency in producing goods and services uh, for humans. And so because of that, our population has continued to skyrocket. Uh, just this last year, we've seen the population roll over 7 billion people uh, worldwide, which is an amazing number. And the rate at which our population, human population, has increased within the last couple of years, um, last couple of decades, is, is really phenomenal. Um, and so it's kind of an interesting question. Are we ever going to reach our carrying capacity? What's going to happen when the human population gets that much bigger? It's not really a question I have an answer to. Um, some limits to populations increasing. Three different things, main things here. Uh, the first one would be a shortage of resources. Uh, and this could include space, physical space. Organisms need a space, kind of like their space bubble. Uh, they need food, they need water, and they also need mates. Uh, we could also see an increase in the presence of predators or an increase in disease and parasites. Those would be some things that could actually limit the size of a population. Now, if we were to track how a population changes and grows, uh, let's go think back to our rabbit example from the beginning. Let's say that we've got uh, our rabbit population, and it's entering this meadow with lots and lots of resources. And so what are we going to see happen? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is that as those rabbits are starting to get used to their environment and, and starting to become established, we're going to see a period of lag phase. And during the lag phase, there's little or no growth. Uh, there's no major growth. And this is kind of the period of acclimating to their new environment. So it's this portion here. We might be see a little bit of growth, but not a lot overall. 
In the second phase, the log phase, this is where we're going to see a lot of growth or an exponential increase in the population size. And so the population is increasing rapidly and there's lots of growth in, uh, in the population because there's really no limiting factors. There's no constraints to the population growing. Um, the third phase is when that growth rate starts to decrease because the resources needed by that organism are starting to become uh, constrained. There's more competition for them and so the, the growth rate is going to diminish. Uh, this is the linear diminishing or you might even call it transitional growth phase. And so the, the birth rate is decreasing, that's what nat, uh, natality is. Um, the birth rate is decreasing but it's still exceeding the mortality rate. And so the number of births uh, is still exceeding the, the number of deaths, but not by a very big margin anymore. Um, and then lastly, we get to this stationary phase right here. And the stationary phase, um, the birth rates and the death rates, uh, they are the same at this point. Uh, and so the population stays uh, pretty much constant. Um, we could also call this the carrying capacity. Uh, if a population re reaches its kind of max uh, population size that can be supported by the environment, that is its carrying capacity, the, the, the largest amount uh, of individuals that can be supported by the particular environment. And as I kind of mentioned earlier, we might see some uh, uh, change in population size. We might see a little bit of growth above and below that, that carrying capacity. Um, and generally it's going to balance out until there's some sort of environmental change. Um, there's a number of different things that can affect population size, birth rates, uh, death rates, uh, immigration where new members, are, new members of the species are, are migrating into the habitats or immigration where they're um, leaving that habitat. Um, and really the effects of population size can be both biotic and abiotic factors. And so it's not only living things that are interacting with one another that can cause changes in population size, but also abiotic factors. Um, climate, for example, um, uh, the, the presence of nutrients, for example, those could have big influences on the population size. And a good example of this is looking at um, the interactions of predators and prey. And so in this example, we're looking at, um, over a number of years, how a wolf and moose population um, influenced one another um, in a national park. And this is from uh, about 1960 to just past 2000. And so the wolf is the blue lines and the red is the uh, moose population. And so what's kind of interesting to note is that as the wolf population begins to increase here, um, our moose population, not really surprisingly, decreases because if there's more wolves in the environment, uh, they're going to be needing and consuming more prey, which happens to be the moose, and so we're going to see that moose population decrease. So as that moose population starts to decrease, well, all of a sudden this wolf population crashes drastically because there's simply not enough food uh, energy resources in this environment to support this huge population size. We could say that that wolf population is above or, or beyond its carrying capacity. As the wolf population then crashes, um, the moose population begins to increase. And then that moose population probably exceeded its carrying capacity. There simply was not enough food to support that moose population or some other limiting resource. And so then we see it crash as well. And we'll continue to kind of see this up and down, up and down between uh, the predator and the prey until it starts to balance out and even out a little bit, unless there's some sort of other environmental change happening. And so that's kind of a good summary, a quick summary of populations, how they can grow and change over time, and some factors that can influence their overall population size.